All right, let's uh, bring the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to uh, Planning and Strategic Initiatives Committee. Um, so we have one item today, uh, no consent items. Uh, before we get to it, just uh, I'm sure everyone's gone through the report. Um, staff uh, aren't necessarily looking for a decision per se right now. Um, they are looking for council endorsement, but again, for funding, it's being referred, uh, the, the way the report is outlined, is being referred to, or would have to be referred to budget, and that would be the final determination if um, uh, the project proceeds as outlined in the report. So we have a uh, staff presentation first. Uh, Brendan, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, and we're here to present a collaborative initiative, and in doing so, we've got Corey Bloom and Carol Bacon and myself who are here to do the presentation, so we're going to alternate as we go through this. We have a brief presentation for you. So what we have is an exciting plan for turning some underutilized space into something that is more uh, a great place for people. And what we're talking about today are four aspects. Really, it's actually four projects rolled into one to give us some better efficiencies and to try and have a greater impact. <clears throat> so the location that we're talking about is Queen Street between Duke and Charles. And on one side, we have Vogelsang Green, which is a bit of a hidden park space at that corner of Duke and Queen. And on the other side, there's a bit of city land opposite the new LRT platform at Charles Street. And along the way, we also have Gowdy's Lane on both sides. And we've done some temporary placemaking as a pilot project during the summertime. It's been pretty successful so far. And that's a lead into more of a permanent solution. For anyone that has walked or been in that area, you can probably attest the sidewalks are fairly narrow, a little bit busted up. The whole uh, infrastructure, much of it is getting near the end of its life cycle. It's time for doing some replacements. So if we're going to be investing in replacing the base infrastructure, now's the time to capitalize on that and do more of an investment for the future. And so we're looking at 2019 is the time frame that we're talking about in terms of a, a plan moving forward. Also, you may remember that there's some recent council-approved direction. The SHAPE DTK 2020 initiative is providing some direction to look at how we're going to attract retail, have more of an experience in some of these downtown areas, and continue to build our community. And there's also a lot of good planning and urban design direction to look at improving and having great streets, streetscapes, and places. So with that, I'll turn it over to Corey. So there's a number of opportunities that this uh, streetscape project uh, presents to us. Uh, three that I wanted to point, uh, point out to you. Uh, number one is an ability to really celebrate our heritage. As you know, King and Queen is the, uh, uh, the original intersection of, the, of this city, and it's, it's our foundation from which we grew. Uh, we also have, uh, as our design consultant uh, pointed out, one of the most intact sections of traditional Main Street, uh, not just within Kitchener in this region, but within Ontario, uh, especially the section between Charles and, uh, uh, and Gowdy's Lane. Uh, so this really does present us an opportunity to, to celebrate that uh, historic Royal Crossroads, as we like to uh, refer to it. Number two is uh, we actually have, a, I think, a significant opportunity to create uh, a uh, retail uh, destination, uh, an opportunity that doesn't present itself on King Street. If you recall, the, the community, uh, not just the urban community, but even the suburban community through the, down, the Shape DTK process really emphasized the need for wanting to see more independent and unique uh, shops and services. And one of the challenges with King Street is that the footprints of the buildings uh, and the store, the, the store footplates are just too big for, uh, for, for independent retail. Yet Queen Street, uh, most of the stores along, that, uh, along Queen Street are smaller in nature and, and far more suited to uh, being able to enable a, a you know, first-time retailer or, or an in, in, a unique independent to really start a new, new store. So I think there's a really an, actually an opportunity to, to create, uh, turn Queen Street into a destination retail uh, location. And then number three is, uh, is, is to be mindful of the bigger opportunities just slightly beyond Queen Street for major redevelopment. 
uh, whether that's parking lots within the near vicinity that uh, could be redeveloped or major buildings that could be uh, uh, transformed. We've already seen a few in the past uh, few years. Uh, the Walper Hotel obviously being uh, front and center with its uh, recent renovation, uh, but also uh, 20 Queen with, uh, with Vidyard and uh, JMP Grocery. So uh, much like we could, I would compare this, uh, to, you know, it's not dissimilar from King Street. You know, nine years ago, uh, King Street was in a condition that nobody wanted to invest in retailers did not want to be more restaurateurs and we've been able to transform that street over uh, the last uh, nine years with the streetscape being the first key part. So many opportunities and uh, there's a rendering on the screen to show you what uh, you know the potential could be if uh, with both the streetscape improvements and, uh, uh, and if we work to attract new retail to the strip. Uh, Vogel saying green is a, a, a real green space gem in the city. Uh, right now, the existing design and amenities of Vogel saying green uh, don't meet current city standards, uh, and they've reached the end of their life cycle and need replacement. Um, currently, it's an inward hidden space that is screened from the surrounding businesses and by berm and plantings. So we have an opportunity here to really open up this space, to improve the aesthetics and function of the site and connectivity with the surrounding community and businesses. Uh, we also um, have an opportunity to apply accessibility, current accessibility and septed design principles to provide access uh, for all ages and abilities and to open the views across Vogel Saying Green with improvements to the lighting and programming that will provide a greater sense of safety and increase use. Uh, the, with the emergence of the um, Dick Street food block the near, and nearby development projects, uh, there's an opportunity here for Volvos and Green to become an important cultural amenity space. So throughout this um, project, we've had a very intensive uh, public engagement. Uh, and during our early discussions, we shared the various concepts with the placemaking feature ideas with the stakeholders and the public. Uh, essentially what the people wanted to see is a more inviting space that is attractive, functional, and comfortable. And one that gives them a reason to be there and to linger. Um, again, accessibility is a big issue. Um, extended use is through the day and through the all seasons. Uh, they wanted better, larger sidewalks, um, patios and seating, as well as better lighting. Um, the laneway nightlife was also another item and they wanted to see more programming. Um, and also, this is an opportunity to showcase uh, the heritage and f future of Kitchener. Okay, so here we are at the plan. So Appendix B of the staff report in your package is a pullout of the actual plan. And I'll just go through a few of the highlights uh, because we took the input from the stakeholders, members of the public, the collaboration we had as the staff team worked with our consultant Stantec, and we came up with a preferred plan. And I'll tell you, we heard some amazing feedback, amazing input through all the conversations that we had. Uh, people really wanted us to go far and have a great vision for a people place. We did have to rein it back in a little bit to be a little bit practical and realistic and make sure that we could have a plan that we could maintain over at least the next 30 years. And so where are we at? Some of the highlights there, uh, we're looking at in the preferred plan of having wider decorative concrete sidewalks. We're looking at having uh, some historic globe LED street lights in the downtown and to connect the other parts of Queen Street that have a similar style. Celebrate a little bit of the heritage with some heritage marker uh, at King and Queen to talk about the significant buildings that are around there. Promote some facade uh, uplighting as well. We're looking at improving the lighting overall and having some string lights that would be along the street or in the laneways. Uh, give you some uh, at different times of year. Uh, it obviously gets dark in December even walking home from a work so having some of the lighting will help with some perceived safety and make things a little bit more comfortable. We're looking at murals, green walls, seating, ability to have some small patios, uh, include some cycling infrastructure and essentially it all comes together uh, in one overall plan. So this is Appendix B. On the right hand side is Vogel Sang Green. That is the showpiece. That's the real showcase of this. Uh, the natural amphitheater design is what is being proposed and it's received so much positive feedback and excitement. 
there's a lot of opportunities. Not only does it provide seating uh, for just casual and formal seating, whether it's for the Duke Street food block or others, but it gives you that ability to have some program space on the green lawn, maybe even unprogrammed activities, uh, different things that you can do throughout the year, different festivals, events. There's just so many possibilities, performances, uh, with some lighting over top, uh, the string lighting, decorative poles, other decorative features in there, a little bit of greenery. And the other thing is actually opening up the facade of that federal building uh, is what we heard throughout the process as well uh, and celebrate some of that architecture. As you move down the street, the idea is to have uh, the laneways with some of the, the string lighting over top. We're looking at more of, in Gowdy's Lane, more of a one-earth opportunity, which is the ability to have shared uh, pedestrian, cycling, and possibly vehicular traffic, although in the long run it would be good to have more just for uh, pedestrians, uh, mostly pedestrians, but cyclists as well. We're looking at a design that would include stamped asphalt is a little bit easier for the long-term maintenance of and having some seating, painting, other things happening and making it just more visible, having some entry features to make it a little bit more visible uh, that there's something happening down there, seating and everything. Uh, as you get to the intersection of King and Queen, that's where we're looking at having a decorative design for the whole intersection. So using a similar treatment to the sunshine on Lancaster Street, uh, this would be for the whole intersection and we're proposing a scramble crosswalk subject to regional approval there. And as you carry on down towards Charles Street, on the other end, we're looking at bookending it with what we're calling a People First Plaza. Right now, there's just a bit of underutilized land that has some grass, some weeds. Uh, it's actually some gravel. It's not looking too, uh, too pretty right now. There's a few surface parking spaces. The city does own that little strip of land there. And it's right across from the LRT station. So what we're proposing is to at least um, carry the decorative concrete along there, have some movable planters. There's the ability to have a bike shelter. Uh, bike station uh, in terms of bike share there is a possibility and a green wall and some seating area for people. And so those are kind of the key features of the overall plan. What essentially we're after is making it more inviting, more comfortable, and trying to provide more reasons for people to linger. Duration of stay is one of the key things and that's the benefits that we're going to get into now. Uh, the economic benefits um Private investment combined with public investment can incent um, economic activity and community involvement. Uh, the redesign uh, and programming will improve the public's overall perception and the aesthetics and safety of the downtown and attract more people. And it potentially will increase more tourism and benefit local businesses. Vogel, uh, the benefits of improving Vogel saying is a safer, more accessible space for all ages and abilities uh, to provide a, a lovely green space for people to connect beyond King Street and to support the local businesses by having providing amenities for um, the food block for, with seating and tables and, and the like there. Um, Good stuff. So in terms of uh, uh, financial funding, so first of all, I will say, that, so we, we, we challenged both our consultant and our staff team with was, you know, we've got a, a, some wonderful ideas from the community, we have an idea of what they want, let's develop the, a, a really pragmatic and realistic uh, streetscape concept, not a gold-plated concept, a concept that we think uh, adds a little but doesn't necessarily, uh, uh, isn't going to be a significantly expensive investment, but is a wise, uh, pra pragmatic investment, and that's what we've really challenged our team to do, and I believe that's what we've got in front of you. Uh, just to uh, put it into context, so just to simply resurface the sidewalks and the asphalt and to do some modest work in Vogel Sand Green is a million dollars. Uh, is basically the, the, the basic, most basic improvements that we could do to bring the sidewalks up to snuff is about a million dollars. So the, the added features on top of that amount to about $850,000. So uh, we feel we're at about $460,000 that uh, we're short and we need to find a funding source for that. Uh, we've identified some options in the report, uh, most significantly are, are partnership opportunities. I've already started the conversation with the downtown BIA. They will be uh, having their budget discussions over the next uh, two months and hope to be, hopefully before our budget discussions, we'll have uh, an idea of the amount of commitment that they're willing to, uh, to, to make towards this project. 
but ultimately there are a number of different options. That's not the only solution. Uh, there are other options that we can look at to uh, uh, to uh, deal with the, with the shortfall, but that's obviously the one that we're going to pursue uh, most heavily. Uh, and lastly, uh, just wanted to conclude by saying you know, when we heard from the community uh, about Queen Street and how they see it today, they really just see it as a means to either get to King Street or get through the downtown. They don't actually see it as a place today. But that's not the future that they want for Queen Street. They envision it as a destination, as a place for them to, uh, uh, to, to come, to, to shop, to dine, and to really have a great community experience both on this street, potentially with water sidewalks, as well as Vogel Sand Green. And uh, uh, we're really looking forward to uh, uh, hopefully great being able to put uh, this plan or a version of this plan in place to, to really create that dynamic space that uh, the community has uh, articulated that they wanted. So with that, there's, uh, there's three recommendations in front of you. Uh, the third one I'll just clearly, or I'll let Brandon just quickly uh, speak to. It's a bit of a, an outlier, but it's, it's in, an important piece of context. So just very quickly, the land that Vogelsang Green is on and the Cenotaph Green as well is owned by the federal government and there's really old, out-of-date agreements that we have to maintain that as public space. The intent is to maintain it as public space and the city have the ability to use that for public space. And so uh, our legal staff are looking for the confirmation from uh, council that they can renew and update those agreements uh, with the federal government. We have been involving them in the design as we've been going through the process as well. And so essentially with that we'd like to conclude and we wanted to thank our internal group. We had a, a lot of collaboration. We involved our, our operations and maintenance staff up front to make sure that this could work for snow plows, that this could work for maintaining any vegetation, uh, to figure out what we have to do here. And it was quite, I'll be honest, uh, uh, as a planner, I'll have to take a small uh, dig at engineers. If we can get engineers, and road, especially road engineers, and those excited about doing this type of work and wanting uh, to do these uh, type of projects, I think we've, we've made it a long way. So we will probably have a seat for any questions and answers when we get to that point. Thank you for the, uh, the presentation uh, from staff. Uh, I'm noting down it's Councillor Ioannidis, Mayor Vanovic, uh, Councillor Marsh, and then Councillor Fernandez, and then Councillor Janetsky, and then Councillor Ellington. That's questions of staff. Again, we have another delegation too, so we'll hear from another delegation and then come back to questions of staff. But I noted down the order of, uh, as you keyed in, so I'll go by the same order. So let's just uh, put everyone out. So we have a delegation from uh, um, Mr. DeSanto. And he's with the OHM Queen Inc. Mr. DeSanto, if you have five minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Singh and members of Council. My name is Gennaro DeSanto, and I am the Director of Planning and Finance with OHM Developments. We're the owners of the property, uh, locally known as the American Hotel, located at 1 Queen Street North and 4 King Street East. We recently submitted our stamp Plan B application prepared by our architects, Masrio Architects, for redevelopment of, of, of the uh, property. And we're speaking here today uh, in support of the staff recommendations as they relate to the Queen Street placemaking plan. We encourage Council to support the report for the following four reasons. One, we are redeveloping the entire Gaudi's Lane facade. The new wall on our building will be a six-story high glass curtain wall where the ground floor is contemplated with commercial suite openings to Gaudi's Lane. The proposed sidewalk on this section of Gaudi's Lane will facilitate the potential for sidewalk patios. The proposed unit paving will create the pedestrian friendly atmosphere that will support the attraction of foot traffic to the commercial operations. And the unit paving will also help delineate the area and remind automotive vehicles to expect pedestrians in the area. Our development combined with the placemaking installation will open the Gowdy's Lane facade dramatically. It will contribute to crime prevention through environmental design principles by bringing eyes and people to the street. It will also create continuation of the pedestrian experience from the American block to Vogelsang Green. Number two, 
We are re renovating the pre-Confederation Queen Street facade with the goal of returning it to its original glory. The facade will include commercial business entrances as well as the main access to the residential portion of the building. The enhanced sidewalk on Queen Street and the shared street design aligns with the goals of our project to be a destination for people accessing the site by bike, sidewalk, ion, or motorized vehicle. The placemaking element on Queen Street will facilitate the potential for activation of the street through the placement of sidewalk patios. The placemaking plan also enhances the livability features of the area. Residents of our building will come and go through Queen Street, through the, sorry, through the Queen Street entrance, there in activating the upgraded space day in and day out. The placemaking elements will also add to their sense of pride in the downtown Kitchener. Art number three. Our development will see the complete renovation of the King's, King Street facade. The historical sight lines of the King Queen corner of the American block will once again become a focal point of the intersection. The proposal for a four corner engagement element will complement the renovations to the facade by enhancing the overall corner and creating a unique landmark feature for people to meet, then disperse into the revitalized downtown area. Lastly, in terms of job creation, Council can anticipate that the placemaking elements will also enhance commercial business interest in the area of downtown Kitchener. Our renovated building and the investment in downtown living along with the placemaking investment will extend the vibrant nightlife currently happening along the King Street along King Street between Ontario and Queen onto Queen Street between Duke and Charles Streets. The ability to have outdoor patios will, will be an attractive will be attractive to a range of current and future business owners. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are some questions of you, Mr. DeSanto. Uh, Mayor Vavanovic. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for, uh, for coming in today. I, I've uh, heard that uh, this uh, uh, level of, of drawing and detail was, uh, was out there, so I'm excited to, uh, to see it today. Um, do you know uh, what your client's plans are from a timing perspective and, and so on in terms of moving ahead with this? In terms of uh, the actual start of construction? Yes. Uh, we were hoping to actually have, I mean, there's, there's uh, different stages of construction that are required because there's an existing building there, but we were hopefully uh, uh, looking forward to starting um, the partial demolition and, and, and uh, remediation of the current building uh, later this fall, depending on the, uh, the timing of the approval process with our application that was just submitted. Okay, and um, can you just remind me on the F King Street facade of the building, um, is it only the, the first retail outlet that's actually part that is, of this building and then it kind of does an L shape in the back? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, and um, in terms of, so you're looking at residential up above? Yes, we are. Okay. And then some office on floors to, or, or mostly residential? It's, it's ground floor commercial with five stories of residential okay. on top. Okay, and this would be rental or, or owned? Uh, we're, we're evaluating both uh, 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 options right now. Uh, from a legal perspective, uh, the building will likely be condominiumized. However, it's possible that we retain a portion or all of the building, uh, both the commercial and residential, as, as rental. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Ioannidis. Thank you, Chair Singh, and thank you for your presentation and uh, um, looking at your drawing, it looks like an exciting project. Um, just wanted to get some clarifications with regards to your project because um, I want to know, like, I guess the, the, the capability of what you're having here, is this, is this, this a rough, this, is this a rough sketch of what you have proposed here or is this like you got more, is this more definitive? Uh, this, is, this is more definitive. It's been a fairly extensive process in terms of coming up with this design. Obviously, there's still some details uh, uh, with relation to the building that have to be finalized, but uh, the format of what you see is, is, uh, is uh, likely what we're, we're moving forward with in terms of uh, the final design and construction. Okay, so you basically have gone through an engineering structural design to, to see whether or not you can support those extra stories and everything? Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, I guess the other question is, uh, is this the only property that your organization owns within the city? I know it's not a, a 
and that's uh, not important. But I'd like to know if whether or not you're you're. Uh, in, in, in fact, no. Uh, we actually own a property literally across the street from City Hall as well at 225 King. Works. Uh, it's also coming in for uh, an application for okay. development. That's good. Okay, thank you, Councilor Fernandez. Thank you. Um, you said that you had just uh, submitted your application. Yes. So you, we're talking about a full site review plan? I'm sorry? A full site review plan? Yes. And you want to have, you want to start by the fall? Uh, depending on the timing, yes. That, that uh, We came in with a stamp plan B application, which is the initial uh, process of the site plan application to my understanding, and we were hoping to be in a position to have a, a demolition permit uh, by the fall, yes. Councillor Fernandez, before you carry on, I want to interrupt the answer. Um, the purpose of today is the placemaking on Queen Street. It's not uh, based on you know where the process or site plan, particulars of the, the application that uh, OHM Queens Inc. has in mind. They're giving their input on the, the staff recommendation. So if you want to keep, if we want to keep all of us, our questions germane to that, it would be helpful. Well, with all due respect to Chair Singh, I don't think you can read my mind, so you don't have any idea where well, I was going to go with the next you questions. You asked for this site plan, so that's, I'm, I'm only basing, interrupting because of that question, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, you know, carry on with your, your questions, but again, I'm giving the recommendation that we try to keep it pertaining to the, uh, the recommend, the, uh, the staff report. But carry on, please. Well, thank you very much. Your, um, your building structure in that, that you're, you're looking at here, you, the intention I'm getting, understanding from what you presented to us, mm -hmm. is that you see this as the uh, first step in helping the redevelopment of Queen Street. Is that, would that be a correct understanding? Or do you see the redevelopment of Queen Street being something that would happen after you finish the development of this site? Uh, I think it's part and parcel. It's, it's certainly a key first step in the, in the rede redevelopment of the area. We see the, the area as a, as a vibrant uh, uh, and upcoming area in terms of uh, future opportunities. Uh, we think the, the uh, intersection of King and Queen are vitally important to the area. So we definitely see this as a major first step. I'm not sure where we can define where it fits along the process, but I think it's certainly a key component uh, for the redevelopment of the area and will likely initiate more redevelopment down the road. Okay. I, I, the reason I'm asking the question is, is I'm just wondering if this is something that needs to, you know, we let you move forward with your proposal and, and the changes you're making on your uh, building on your site before we start, uh, you know, adding, doing work on Queen Street and, and, uh, and the Duke block, that whole Vogelson mm -hmm. Green. Um, so if you don't... If you don't receive approval in the fall, I mean, what would be the next date that you would start be working on? I, I'm trying to see the timeline between where you would be working on your project and, and the placemaking that our staff has presented to us. Well, I, I think the, the, the timeline for, for our development and the, uh, the, the city's uh, placemaking plan kind of integrate well together. The timing should be relatively consistent with, with both projects. Uh, in terms of our uh, approval process, I mean, certainly there, there's variable time, timelines for approval, but certainly uh, uh, concurrent with the approvals, we plan on moving forward right away, and uh, the development of, of the entire property is probably 12 to 16 months from start to finish. So I would think that that fits very well with the city's uh, timeline for uh, the, the placemaking plan and the redevelopment of the, of the Queen Street corridor. Okay. So I think they're very complementary with each other. Okay, and I appreciate you giving us a rough timeline because you know we never know <laughs> what timelines can happen with construction. So you're saying 12 to 16 months from start to finish, approximately. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Councillor Marsh. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming in, uh, Mr. DeSanto. And My I'm, pleasure. I am um, excited as the ward councillor to see this uh, looking like it's going to move forward sooner than later. Uh, just a question about the uh, retail space, commercial spaces on the main floor. Are they going to be, it looks like from this angle that they're going to be small uh, uh, sizes. Is that right? 
we, we have a, a, a total footprint of the commercial area, which I believe is approximately 6,500 to 7,000 square feet. Uh, and the division of the actual space, uh, there is some flexibility for it for that. So we can accommodate various use, uses depending on what the demand for the area is. Mm -hmm. uh, but we envision uses that are complementary to the residential building on top and, and uh, the, the area in general. So okay. there is some flexibility, but, but the, the total area, uh, excluding any outdoor patios and so on, will probably not exceed 7,000 square feet. Perfect. That, yeah, that, uh, I think that uh, that will work really well and that it will really, like you're saying, be complementary uh, uh, to the Queen Street placemaking plan. So um, that's great. And um, uh, when you see, when you have more detailed plans that are finalized, we'll look forward to seeing those as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gazzola. Are there any heritage implications with what you want to do? We, we've submitted, uh, along with our, our application, a, a heritage impact study. Uh, there are certain heritage implications that uh, uh, we're addressing in terms of our, our d design and development, uh, but basically, as, as addressed in my, in my presentation, it, it deals with the Queen Street facade and, and the King Street facade, which uh, will be restored uh, at some level as best possible to the original kind of uh, identity that the uh, building had. Uh, and then the uh, additional construction on top will integrate well with the um, w with the heritage features that we're maintaining. This is the first I've heard of this, so I, I don't know if it's been a secret, but it's been well kept. <laughs> what, uh, in the fullness of time here, what are you expecting from the city? Well, I mean, our, our, our purpose here today was to encourage council, obviously, to to, uh, to move forward with staff's uh, recommendations on, on the placemaking plan. Again, I think it, it integrates extremely well with, uh, with uh, our development uh, and the entire neighborhood in general. I mean, uh, we see King and Queen, uh, I guess, the Royal Cross Roads, as, as they're known as, as, as a, a focal point for the area. And uh, in terms of our development, but the enhancements that the city's uh, proposing, I mean, just uh, they integrate so well together that, that we're ultimately in support of, of, um, of it happening and, and that's what we're here to uh, request that the council uh, endorse. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Uh, uh, how committed are you? What, what happens if uh, the city doesn't approve this place making plan? Well, it's always a possibility. I, I mean, it, it is a possibility. We certainly believe, and I, I noted it earlier, that, that the redevelopment of the, the uh, uh, American Hotel building will certainly uh, uh, nonetheless be a positive for the area. Uh, and the commercial uses on the ground floor that we're proposing will certainly engage kind of uh, uh, people to, to uh, uh, take more advantage of the neighborhood in general. And then ultimately, I guess, through the passage of time, uh, the city may once again reconsider um, the enhancements that, that the staff is proposing in the placemaking uh, uh, plan. Uh, but nonetheless, again, I, 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 you know, we value that, uh, that area of the city. We think it's an important area of the city, and we think redevelopment for the downtown core is vitally important. And um, we would encourage uh, council to, to uh, um, uh, move forward with the placemaking uh, plan because uh, uh, it enhances not only our property but the, but the entire downtown. When you made your decision, your corporate decision to do this, were you aware of uh, plans for for that area? For the placemaking plan? Yes. No, we were not. No. So, you, uh, so if, I'm we, hearing, if I'm hearing correctly, you you have a good plan here that you've researched and whatnot, and you're you're going to go ahead regardless of where the city goes. Y yes. And you're one, you're in trying to encourage the city to yeah. to carry on. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and we, we, to some extent, I guess, uh, and staff did use the, the terminology of, a, you know, the, the concept of private-public partnerships. I mean, we see our redevelopment together with the, with the municipality working on, on the placemaking plan as, as some form of a partnership. Our, our, our improvement and expansion uh, of Gaudi's Lane in particular is something that uh, uh, whatever we do and, and the city adds to uh, is, is a perfect example of, of, of what, uh, you know, a partnership st uh, structure between the, the, the city 
city and a private developer like ourselves could, could generate. Uh, you know, and ultimately, I think uh, there could be some some ongoing discussions down the road between uh, staff and, and and us through our development process that uh, helps further entrench that uh, the concept of the partnership between the city and and us as a private developer. Are you looking for any financial support from the city? Uh, no. No. Uh, okay, that's that's fine. Um, one final question. Uh, is this a total reconstruction, or a complete demolition, and, or is it a... It, it, it's, it's not a complete demolition, clearly, because we are maintaining uh, the, the heritage features on, on Queen and King. Uh, a, a significant part of the building will be taken down, and uh, uh, substantially the, the, um, uh, the building, from, from an interior point of view, will be new, will be a new structure. Uh, integrated with the, with the um, current heritage features that are yeah. that are being maintained. I just want to emphasize that. So, in your current plans, you don't you don't have problems with uh, doing whatever you can to maintain the heritage value. We we've uh, we have a full team of consultants that have uh, studied it in, in great detail, and we are very confident that uh, uh, we can build the structure uh, uh, and maintain the heritage features that we have to maintain. Yes. Yeah. Are you are you you're obviously not a local firm. Uh, no, our, 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 no, we're not. Where, where are you from? Uh, we have a head office in Guelph and, uh, and another office in, in Markham, Ontario. Have you done this type of work in, in either of those places? Yes, we have. We have not done some, something in, in terms of a, a, a kind of a, an integration of a, a, an existing building and a new building. Most of our experience has to do with uh, uh, new construction. However, we are engaging or we plan to engage contractors that have a wealth of experience in doing these types of projects. Thank you. Councilor Jatsky. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, I really do like the, uh, the design and the architecture of the proposed uh, redevelopment, I guess you could call it, of the, uh, of the building, one of the oldest buildings in Kitchener. Um, I did, you did acknowledge that there has been demolition, as uh, Councilor Gazzola sort of uh, started that uh, particular comment, uh, that the, and you had indicated the facade of King Street and Queen would be preserved, and I guess the balance would be sort of, um, I guess demolished because you want to really. Uh, I guess this is an old building; it needs to be really brought up to date. I, I've been inside it back a number of years ago, so I need. I know it needs the guts to be cleaned out. Uh, point of do, order. Do you, do you, uh, Councilor Jesse, just a second. A point of order was called by What's the Councilor problem? David. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, you, you brought it up already, but we really need to focus on the placemaking aspects of this and just not questioning, just showing support that I think the, question, the line of questioning we're going along here is dragging on this meeting in a way that we're going to be dealing with at some point, but not now. Councilor Davies just making comments to my earlier point that we have, we should try to focus on the placemaking uh, plan for Queen Street as opposed to the design of what they have in mind. Uh, it's exciting. It looks great. Uh, I'm sure that's, that's where a lot of the questions are coming from, from that excitement. And hopefully, Mr. DeSanto, you take it away from that. Uh, but again, uh, we have a long discussion ahead of us regarding the item at hand. If you want to focus on that, uh, please carry on. The building does fit in nicely with the placemaking plan, as you, as, as you pointed out. You, you had the, the first start before staff came in, in on it. The design that you have here shows um, some type of uh, ground floor features that will be fronting onto Gowdy's Lane. And, uh, and I look at the place thinking map and it shows that Gowdy's Lane will sort of fit in as a uh, eating area, a recreational area, etc. Yet it's sort of a, a right of way area to come in and out into the parking lots that are right in behind you and beside you. How is that going to work? Well, we think that we could uh, that we will use uh, the placemaking features and and other landscaping features that are available uh, to kind of screen the two areas so that that it's clearly defined where vehicle uh, access is, is is going to be utilized and where pedestrian access is going to be uh, uh, accommodated. Uh, you know, ultimately, that's a, that's a very common issue that we have in in, in downtown or urban centers uh, like King, King and Queen. So we think that uh, we can do that through just design features and, and, and proper screening that uh, make it clear but make it visually pleasing to, to pedestrians and, and, uh, and uh, from, uh, from a sightline perspective. 
it looks like this is going to be a six, seven, six story building? That is correct, yes. And of course, the ground floor will be retail, commercial oriented. I gather that the top three floors are condominium, as you pointed out. They're going to be residential, yes. We're, we're, we're looking at, the, at condominiumizing the building, uh, but we may, may maintain a portion of the building as, as a, a rental portfolio. Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah. The second and third floor, what would that be used for? And how would that tie in with the, with the place making? Is that commercial, Everything. retail, or no. residential? Everything above the first floor is all residential, so we have five stories of residential on top of the ground floor commercial. Oh, I see, okay. And you hope to have this completed how soon? Uh, from the approval process, the, the, the project timelines, I guess, weather permitting and so on, will probably be 12 to 16 months. 16 months, okay. Looks good, good luck. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming in and showing us uh, your plans. This looks very exciting. Uh, my question actually stems from the questions of Councillor Gazzola about uh, the discussions going forward. <coughs> Um, as you're aware, this, the proposal by staff is over budget. Uh, so I'm just wondering if it's worth, like if, if uh, it's even worth having a discussion with you at a future date, uh, maybe on a matching basis or that sort of thing, if your company or client would be interested in perhaps investing in some local uh, infrastructure that would, we could identify where it would be right near your building and how it, is that uh, something that we would be worth you would consider? We're extremely open to those discussions, absolutely. Uh, again, we see the uh, placemaking uh, strategies that the staff is recommending and our development uh, as, a, as a strong complementary features to each other. And we certainly think that uh, there'd be some element of, of um, uh, private-public uh, uh, partnership uh, in doing some of the placemaking features around our, our building on Gowdy's Lane and perhaps even on Queen Street. So uh, without making any formal commitments, we, we would certainly entertain having dialogue with staff uh, uh, along those lines. It makes me very happy to hear that. Thank you. Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Singh. Uh, I'm just wondering if you could comment with your experience uh, what the impact of having some good placemaking features like we're proposing here would have uh, to the community, the neighborhood of, of your development? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, clearly what, what, what you want is, is the area, and particularly, uh, I mean, obviously our primary focus is the, 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 the uh, Queen and King intersection there that uh, impacts our building along Gowdy's Lane. But when you have clearly defined uh, um, softer landscaping details and, and, and uh, uh, details that uh, differentiate uh, vehicle traffic and pedestrian access, it, it's, a, it's a welcoming feature and an attraction uh, to the area. And in our case, it'll be uh, something that attracts pedestrians and, and even the, the residential users above to the commercial space below. So it makes it a gathering spot, destination location, a meeting place, uh, for lack of better terms, uh, that then will drive everything around the area because people are there and, and, and now they're no longer, uh, there's no longer a need for vehicles and, and so on and so forth. You walk from one place to another, from one store to another, from one restaurant to another. And, and you do that by kind of defining it and encouraging people to kind of get there and, and you do that using placemaking features landscaping details and so on and so forth and that's why uh, from our perspective uh, we're very supportive of the, the staff recommendation and we're very supportive of talking to staff about um, you know if, if, if uh, we get that far with financial contributions to have some of these placemaking details particularly along Gowdy's Lane um, implemented. Great. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. Those were questions of the committee. I just have quickly some I want to reiterate again the the excitement that you can feel from the room uh, that this is a, a good design and it's great to see that there's going to be uh, a lot of kind of uh, vibrancy added to that corner with what you have the vision uh, with your building. Um, again, for the placemaking plan, uh, one of the hurdles that this, uh, this committee will have to deal with uh, as we refer to budget is the shortfall in trying to meet the uh, enhanced features of the, uh, the recommendations from staff. Uh, but develop development such as yours adds additional revenue to the city as well, and one of which is uh, sometimes parkland dedication. Mm -hmm. um, as you've designed the business plan for what you have the vision for, do you know what that component would be? Does uh, it have to be exact, approximates? Uh, I think we're exempt from, from, from that, given the location of the, um, 
uh, of the building. I think that the redevelopment in this corridor is exempt from development charges and parkland dedication. Oh, both. Okay, I wasn't yes. sure it was parkland yes. as well. Anyway, it was DCs, but I wasn't sure parkland. Well, that would have been nice to get that extra, but anyway, that's fine. <laughs> she goes, when I delay past 2019, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for making your presentation. My pleasure, thank you. All right. So uh, we had uh, questions of staff as well. I'll go by the order that uh, everyone had rung in before. So everyone that was interested, please, if you can ring back in. So I had first Councillor Ioannidis. Those are all the delegates, yes. Now questions of staff. Okay, thank you, Chair Singh. Um, my questions are regards to the financial uh, implications, and I know we've you've gone through this in the report, but I, I'm still just I want to get it just to make sure it's crystal clear what where the funding is coming from and everything else. So, what is the basic funding here for for the, the for Queen Street and the Garden? Is that eight hundred fifty thousand? So through the chair, we'll walk through because there's four aspects. Okay. And so we'll provide as much clarity I think that would be good if we went through that because... Uh, the other thing is I'll preference any of the, uh, the discussion about uh, budget related and financial related is that we still are going to be working as staff over the next month or so on tightening up the funding model as we go through the budget process. So there are two items that have placeholders in the capital budget right now. Number one is Queen Street resurfacing, and we've clarified if you add the design amount and the actual construction amount, it's 650,000. And Vogelsang Green has a placeholder of 250,000 for a standard park replacement. There's currently nothing in there for resurfacing the laneway, Gowdy's Lane, nor is there anything in there for the land that's at Charles and Queen. So you're saying there's roughly, the base is 900K? Is that currently, right? Currently, for those first two items, Queen Street and Vogelsang, there's roughly 900K. Okay. And so what we're looking at is, we've included a chart in the report, and that identifies each, for each of those four aspects that we mentioned, what the placemaking feature cost that we think we can maintain over a 30 year life cycle would be. We're recommending to do all four at once because we think there are some efficiencies with doing it at once, especially if we got LRT operational soon. We might as well just, like if we're gonna have to go through a little bit more construction, we might as well get some great places for people out of it. So that's why we've been recommending to do all four at once. If you add up those four items, so Queen Street, at an additional cost of 400,000, Vogel saying green at another 205,000. The laneway, we split it into what it would be if you just did, if you just paved it and did nothing else versus adding some additional placemaking features, it would be another 125,000. And the People First Plaza, the same thing. Just to do base work is 65,000. But if you want to make it a people first plaza, it's 115. So we've added up, it's about 850,000 in total to do basically four projects. Staff have looked at it, we've worked together. Planning has an urban design improvements budget that we had allocated and identified money to do something in the LRT downtown station area and Queen Street is one of the locations that our parts plan that council's approved recommended to do enhanced streetscape for. And so we have some funds from that urban design improvements account. Okay. There's also economic development and transportation services has some of the cycling infrastructure. And so those three have gotten together to help partner. And then we, what's left is the shortfall of unfunded, which is in the right hand column of the chart. Okay. So roughly, other city departments are forking over another 390k, roughly. Uh, in, in total, we, we've identified 535,000 total. Oh, 535 on top of the 850. But that's that's of the that's because there are the two areas that currently don't have anything uh, in the budget from like an engineering perspective. 
So a little bit goes towards the laneway and the resurfacing, but as a decorative asphalt instead of just... Okay, because that's where I'm trying to get... I want to, I want to draw that definitive line because from what I've been hearing out in the public realm that we're spending all this money, but some of this money is already available, but... Okay, so... 1.4 million is already identified within capital budgets. Okay. And so, so the shortfall is just up to 460000 if you were to do all four. But basically, if it's 900 k is the base that we would do regardless of whatever, we're asking really half, we, we put in an additional half a million dollars into this project. That's correct. Okay. That's, well, that's, that's the number I wanted, wanted to get at. So, okay. Thank you. Mayor Bovenevich? Thank you very much, and uh, first of all, thank you uh, to staff for all of your uh, your work on this and your engagement of uh, of the community on this. Because I I think it um, it speaks to um, something that I know I've heard around the, this council horseshoe many times, uh, which is the importance of of economic development, the importance of trying to find public private opportunities as well as um, the importance of place making and creating an environment where uh, investment can, can occur and succeed. Um, as we look at the, the, the deficit that's being talked about, um, so you, you've dialogued with the BIA already? Uh, through the chair, you know, yes, we've had an initial discussion uh, with the BIA board uh, about a month ago. Uh, but they will not be concluding their uh, budget discussions until uh, September and then ultimately gets ratified by their membership in, I believe, late October. Um, we know that from an administrative level, they're supportive. They haven't sort of tipped their hand as a board whether they're uh, supportive. We expect to get that confirmation in September. So I guess that's part of what's behind your recommendation the way it is, referring this to capital budget so that those, those that dialogue can continue? That's correct. Um, have we had any conversation with our federal partners who, and you've referenced the fact that we need a new agreement with, uh, with them, is there an opportunity that they might um, contribute some towards this in light of the fact that it's their property and their um, historical building in the middle? Uh, through the chair, uh, from what we understand is that there is, there may be a, uh, an infrastructure program that they may, that they're hoping to announce next year, uh, to which this could be a candidate uh, project, and we understand that there could be some uh, excitement amongst uh, at least one local politician in terms of its applicability to, uh, uh, for Vogel Sangreen in particular to be uh, a potential project and being that it's federal land that there's some sensibility in that. So, uh, so there has been some initial conversations. Um, so there is opportunity is what I would suggest. Are there any um, opportunities do we know um, where we might and I'm not sure in terms of some of what you're trying to do with the uh, you know, little amphitheater and, and so on. Like I don't know if any of it has anything to do with, with stormwater and drainage. And I mean, Is there any potential creative parts where we can access some of the environmental climate change stormwater funding that might be available from the feds? Through the, through the chair, we are looking at doing some uh, low-impact development stormwater management as kind of a feature project within Vogelsang, but that would be uh, in partnership with the stormwater management utility. The funds that we've indicated as being unfunded in here is in addition to any of that. So we may want to take a look at, at that and see is there an opportunity there and is there an opportunity um, through, even like through some of the FCM green funding um, loan and or grant uh, around some of this? Yep, through the chair, I think that's, that's generally why we have the recommendation of referring to the budget process to make sure that staff and others, uh, including uh, anyone around the horseshoe that can help work towards firming up any financial partnerships. I will highlight that we need to know by the beginning of next year. We need to know by the time we're at budget approval time frame, essentially, or maybe March at the latest, 
because engineering has to take this over and do the detailed design for uh, in 2018. So they, they, we at least need to know by that time frame where we're at. And so that's why we need to kind of move those discussions along this fall. And um, we heard from the delegation that um, they were willing to entertain possibly uh, a contribution towards this. Have we had any dialogue with the others um, who have recently redeveloped in the area? I'm thinking the Voisins, uh, the Walper, and so on. Would they possibly be willing to be part of uh, the solution? Uh, through the chair, we've had initial conversations about the plan itself with uh, most of who you reference. Uh, they're excited and supportive. We haven't had the conversation about are they willing to contribute, but certainly we'll have those over the fall, especially if it's a, if it's a clear benefit to their property beyond just a normal scope of, uh, of work. Okay, and I will note that there are letters on our desk, uh, uh, Mr. Clerk, from several of those uh, property owners. Um, so that's all my questions. My time is up anyway. Um, unless the ward councillor plans to, to move this, I, I, I would do it. But if she wants to, I'm willing to uh, pass it over to her. Okay, I'll come back to that. Uh, councillor Fernandez? Thanks. So this is um, quite an in-depth and, and um, interesting package with concept um, ideas and designs from all over the world, really. I think w what I'm seeing here from New York and, and other places. Um, when, when did this, or, or was this in our business plan? Through the chair, um, what we had previously was the parts plan, which is the predecessor to this. So we have the master plans were in the business plan. So the parts central plan, and then uh, economic development just did the shape uh, DTK 2020. So what we're now at is implementation. And so we viewed this as one of the implementation aspects of it. Uh, and so this year, uh, essentially, in terms of our standpoint from the planning division is that you know we have hundreds of things that that we do that don 't all make the corporate business plan uh, and this item to be honest we 've done between February and now, and so it 's not even a, a one year uh, body of work in terms of uh, doing the piece uh, so in in hindsight, could we add i guess every streetscape plan that we do to the business plan that 's a possibility i 'd have to talk uh, that through. Okay. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is is this was something that came out of uh, the, the DK 2020 and the parts plan um, and so staff took the initiative to m move it along quicker than maybe originally planned because I mean 2020 we're talking about 2018 um, and then you didn't, uh, you didn't do all the work within staff's realm, but you had a consultant who helped as well. Uh, through the chair, I'll answer the first part. I think the real opportunity was engineering uh, and parks had already identified the need to do this work in 2019. Uh, the, ro the road and the condition of the sidewalk it needs to be repaired. We saw this as an opportunity to, uh, as, as Brandon mentioned, implement some of the, the, the goals of those two strategies, and, and we needed to do it now before engineering uh, began their work of designing the road. So I think this is an opportunistic uh, chance for us to uh, make sure that uh, we're, we're making the best use of future infrastructure spend spending that's in the capital budget. Okay. Can I ask how much it costs the um, for us, for the consultant, to do the work as part of this? Through the chair, it was approximately $32,000, and that's within the tender that council approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so when, like, we heard from the delegation that their plan sort of came first before the placemaking plan came. Is that a correct understanding? Were you aware of the of the the application and the changes around the American um, block plan? Through the chair, staff are aware of many investments that have occurred along Queen Street corridor over the last several years, and we are also have some awareness and some discussion with different property owners along the corridor as we are looking to move forward. 
in terms of the exact timing of when things were found out, uh, I'm uncertain as to the exact date of which one preceded the other. Uh, in my mind, it doesn't matter, I don't think. Uh, it's a matter of a partnership. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to say in the report, is that it can work together at the same time. And it works good and for I public uh, authority to kind of signify to private uh, development interests and other landowners that we do have an interest in making a great city and a great place. And that will go hand in hand with additional private investment beyond just the American Hotel site, other sites along Queen Street. And I don't disagree with you at all, um, Brandon, but I, th I think, I guess what I'm trying to get at is is we've had a lot of focus on our downtown. And notwithstanding that, yes, there is work that needs to be done around Queen Street. And I've, I've been in Gowdy's Lane with, the, with the, the work that has been done there, and the patios and the music, and it's lovely. I'm not saying that it isn't. But there's so many other areas in the city that I see the outside of the downtown core. And I, that, you know, this is a, sing, a song I've sung before. Um, it, to, to we, we're in a deficit here on this. If we were to move forward on this today, we don't have the money yet, and so I, I like the idea of a plan because it's always good to plan. But you know, maybe we're a bit premature yet until we see how the whole American Block plan finishes. Would that not be a bit more reasonable, timing-wise? Uh, through the chair, we actually like to have a streetscape master plan first because then we have one comprehensive blueprint drawing that as each development comes in, they can follow the same plan. And as each public investment, whether it's the city or the region or utility or someone else, we're following the exact same plan. So that when the actual development comes in, we can look at making sure that that streetscape along their frontage matches it. The danger is if you have each individual one coming in before you actually have an approved plan, it's going to be piecemeal. It could look all different. You need to know, like, what are, what's the street lighting? What are the benches? What are the planters? What are the, the features that are happening in front? What is it all going to look like so that we have one plan together? So it's actually better to have the plan as soon as you can. Okay. I have a lot more questions, and I'll just key in again. Let's try to go by the same order here. Uh, Councilor Marsh. Thank you. Uh, first, I just want to add uh, um, a piece of uh, clarification just around uh, the idea that this might not have been fully thought through um, previous to the DTK 2020. I recall the plan for the downtown that was for 2011 and 2014 uh, included one of the main directions was to uh, take downtown beyond King Street and to really emphasize some of the side streets. And we have, we have um, been thinking about this for a number of years at this point. I think that this is an opportunity to uh, to move, to follow through with with that commitment that was in that strategy uh, two strategies ago. So this is not new. Uh, I like the direction the mayor is going and looking for uh, leveraging funding from other sources. And I've already had conversations uh, with the, the director of the BIA to that effect, and, and uh, so we can follow follow up offline about some other opportunities that might might present themselves. One question I have is around the um, what will what will the some of the features that are in this plan look like in the winter, specifically around the Volkswagen Green? Uh, do we see opportunity to make use of the Volkswagen Green in the winter months? Uh, through the chair, um, yes, actually there is opportunity for some. Um, uh, uh, programming to actually occur within that space. Um, the, the difference between what it looks like now is, is quite sheltered and shaded and everything else, whereas by having this great lawn, I call it, um, you have a lot of, you have an opportunity to have some more sunshine, so it's a little bit a warmer space. You can still put out tables and chairs on the warmer days. Um, there's also opportunity for um, uh, festivals, celebrations, seasonal celebrations, and that sort of thing. So um, you can have 
um, art put up. You can also ha have seasonal lighting and the like. Okay, thank you. And um, um, I'm wondering to what degree we uh, have within this plan a thought towards creating a destination uh, that is, um, you know, an opportunity for people to, to go and, and uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, see a, 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 a permanent structure or uh, some, some attraction that would have uh, people going to just to see themselves, see, see a picture of themselves with it or something like that. Something that would really draw people that would be on a permanent basis. Would there be opportunity for that in any of the, uh, the new features? Uh, through the chair, I think there's actually a number of opportunities uh, within this plan. Uh, certainly the, the suggested green walls and mural walls, depending on the, uh, how, how stunning that mural may be, those, those become uh, obvious locations. On, on a whole, though, I think one of the distinct features uh, that we're excited about is, is the overhead lighting, uh, the sort of, uh, string lighting that could go across the street as really a defining feature that is not, uh, certainly isn't done anywhere in this region and, and um, you know, the distillery district is about the only place that I can think of sort of close by that actually has uh, implemented such a feature and, and what I think excites us is if we can combine that with, uh, uh, you know, future lighting to the historic facades, I think the historic element of those two aspects uh, has a certain charm and draw to it that you, you can't create that kind of, uh, of, an, of an experience. Uh, so I think th those are, uh, so, so the, the lighting being a significant one and then certainly the murals being other uh, opportunities to, to give that kind of experience uh, that you're talking about. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I'm excited about this plan and I, I'm confident that uh, with some creative thought and some, uh, uh, some hard work we can, we can find find ways to, to make it happen and to, uh, to be efficient with our dollars rather than uh, spread it out over uh, too long a time and we would lose the opportunity for efficiency. Thank you. Oh, and if the mayor does want to, uh, I'll let it, you, uh, the mayor was first, so if he wants to uh, put forward the motion, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm happy to do so. All right, uh, so uh, at the appropriate time, Chair, I'd like to uh, make the motion. Thank you. Councilor Gazzola. I'm uh, still trying to figure out where the money came for, for this project. Now, a number of years ago, there was funding set aside for some diversion of Queen Street. Is that, is that that money? Through the chair, that's, you're referring to the Queen Benton diversion, which yeah, was a regional yeah. initiative, and that has now been officially abandoned. That's been what? The Queen Benton diversion has been abandoned. So, so it was a when, regional project. <laughs> when was that abandoned? Uh, th through the chair several years ago. So did we indicated. have funding in our budget for that? Through the chair, that was a regional road project. And we had no funding in our budget from that? Uh, through the chair, not that I'm aware of. If I go back a few years, I won't find any funding for that. Through the chair, I cannot confirm that. Yeah. Okay, the uh, uh, concern. One of the concerns I have is that Queen Street's a, a main east-west thoroughfare, and, and so that really makes it difficult, does it not, to get into uh, this type of program? Through the chair, I'm not, also not going to comment if it's east or west in Kitchener. <laughs> well, whatever it is, okay. <laughs> but I will say that we heard a lot from the public and stakeholders that they wished we could close the street and have it just for people and not for cars. However, as, as we mentioned in the presentation, we have taken a practical approach. It is an emergency route. So emergency services need to get through. You'll notice like even during festivals where King Street's closed, you have to keep that intersection open. And also it is a, a route that for vehicles, it's one of those few areas through downtown Kitchener where you can get to different destinations on either side. And so we do need at least for the short term to keep it open. Uh, and so that's why we've looked at uh, an option that can be more of a complete street for everybody. Okay, I, I would like to have seen it as a, as a complete close-up. 
by doing what we're doing here, we really um, shifted around a lot of amounts here and there. I, I didn't realize when I first read that 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 basically you are a million dollar a million dollars short here. I mean, staff on their own have gone out and made some suggestions or not, but that's the the, the point is we're we're a million dollars short. Um, I guess uh, my concern is we really have an infrastructure, a huge infrastructure problem, not only in our city, in our region, in our province, in the world. And all of a sudden this here becomes, you're, you're, you're putting it up as a number one priority, right? Just, you know, on what basis do you make that decision? Through the chair, there's a number of uh, points and discussion matters uh, in response to that. Uh, however, I would point out that we still have the budget process to go through, and we still have, we do have an associated uh, budget issue paper that we're preparing for our internal admin review to consider. Uh, I would say that when we're talking about an infrastructure issue in the city, Queen Street and the laneways, and even Vogel St. Green are part of it. So they're falling apart. They're part of the infrastructure issue. And so they are being redone in 2019. And what we're suggesting is, if you're going to go to the expense of redoing some of the infrastructure in this area, we can make an even wiser decision and a wiser investment in that at the same time that could be a 30, and it's a 30-year decision or plus, like the, the, the okay, infrastructure okay. will last long. I, you, you've said that already, and I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I, I did have a question as to, uh, we put in new sidewalks from there back in 1980, and now we're needing to replace them. Where I live, they put sidewalks in in 1964, and there's no question, or there's no discussion of replacing them. And not even any discussion of keeping them even. So I'm just, you know, it's these types of questions that arouses a sure through the chair. Questions. Sorry, through the chair. That's those are the, some of the exact discussions and considerations that staff had. So in the 80s, there was some programs that the city took part in uh, that had some funding actually at the time for streetscape. And you'll notice that a lot of the sidewalk on Queen Street has different. Uh, paver stones are different brick style and a lot of those are now tripping hazards they're missing the it, it essentially lasted 30 years and so that's what we are looking at with this new plan is at least a 30 year uh, life cycle cost that we are looking at it and what we ended up on it would be great to do paver stones it would be great to do grant it'd be great to do all of these features but it is expensive to maintain and so we came up with a plan that we feel is the most cost effective to maintain every year and it's using concrete for the sidewalks but we can do it in a more of a decorative style but then hopefully the sidewalks will last beyond 30 years the way that they have in other areas from the 60s okay well i had a couple of just one quick question one other quick question uh, you, you've not talked about in all of this operating costs maintenance costs going forward that's a that's a and replacement cost down the road. That's a, that's a substantial figure. Do we have any figures for that? Through the chair, absolutely. And that's when staff are looking at this opportunity, when engineering and park staff are looking to do this work. That's one of the two biggest things that we set out to do, is to consider this as the life cycle cost. So capital operating. And over 30 years, if we need to replace the bike racks, how much might that be in what year? And so what we arrived at is you could do a really expensive plan. It's going to be very expensive to maintain. The plan that you have before you, the cost estimate that we have is an annual maintenance cost that would be $5,000 per year more than the base model of just the asphalt road and the concrete sidewalks for a total of $9,000 per year. And that would include Queen Street, Vogel St. Green, Gowdy's Lane, and the People First Plaza, if we did all four of those all at once. 
you just I'm over my time. Just repeat that. You're gonna you're gonna maintain all of this for nine thousand dollars a year. Did I hear right? I'm getting old. My hearing's going. Did I hear right? Through the chair, that is the cost estimate that we have come to, and that does not include the replacement cost. So that doesn't include if a bike rack needs to be replaced in seven to ten years, or we have to redo the sharrows. That's just annual maintenance, so like the planter beds, uh, the lighting, you know, things like that. Maybe there's graffiti, etc. Let me just add some clarity. I think the way I heard it as well was that it's nine thousand more than it would otherwise, just for the basic reconstruction. It's through the ch to the chair, it's five thousand dollars more. So we've estimated the base model. The base model is about four thousand dollars per year to do this plan that staff have put together. It's four thousand. It's, it's nine thousand, so that's an increment of five thousand. Oh, I see. Okay. Good. You are your time if you want to bring back in. I'm out of time. I'm, I'm, I'm. You can bring back in if you like. Um, so I'm going back to the order. Those going the second time, Councilor Davy, Councilor Ioannidis, here for comments. Yeah. And uh, Mayor Renovic, here for comments. Because you haven't rung in yet. Oh, I see, yes. Okay, thank you. You both hadn't rung back in. When I came to questions of staff, I had said, everyone that had rung in before, please ring back in. So I was going by that order. So, Councilor Ellington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question actually piggybacks on what we were just talking about, and that is maintenance. Are you, guys, are you satisfied that you've budgeted or you're budgeting enough for maintenance on this? Because I ask that because after all of the money we spent in Victoria Park, for example, a lot of that area need, badly needs maintenance and that's because not enough money is there to maintain what we've already spent. So I'm asking you, are you satisfied there's enough there to continue to maintain this in what I think is an excellent plan, fantastic report? Through the chair, I would suggest that it always would be wise to plan for a worst case scenario if you can. And I don't think we would look at an offer of any additional funds identified as a line item in the operating budget towards making sure this is. I think what we've identified is something that could comfortably be done. I think the important piece for this particular one is that uh, we make sure that it actually is specifically identified in our operating budget so that we make sure that it is there and is available. Because when times get tight and if things are just in, in large kind of overall city accounts, then there could be other priorities. Uh, I'll suggest that we're also going to pursue that through the budget process as well and we can confirm that as we go through both capital and operating budget internally and then when we get to council. And does, Brandon, does that also include you have a lot of areas in here that, I, again, I, I, I really like. Does it include enough shaded areas of particularly the park areas you're proposing? Because no matter how, how much you provide space for people if you'd, in the summer, if they're, if they're not shaded, that there's going to be problems. Through the chair, I would suggest that on shade, that's why it's important to have some mature trees in Vogel Sand Green and in some of the, uh, where we have the ability to do it. There is a good stretch of Queen Street where we've decided that it's operationally from a cost perspective that uh, trees aren't going to survive in some of those areas. Uh, in the downtown, just by the very nature of it, there's some shade, like the laneway has got shade quite often throughout the day. Uh, and through some of the rest of the street as well. Thank you, Mr. And, and I have some comments for later. If you can bring back in for your comments. That's great. Uh, Councilor Janetsky. <coughs> you, you, second time. Okay. I'm still going by first time. The uh, survey that you conducted back uh, earlier in the year 
Were, the, were these drawings initially presented to, to the public or based on feedback you created these types of uh, designs? Through the chair, that's a good question. We, act, we did a two-phased approach. So the, we did two surveys. The first, Engage Kitchener survey, and a round of uh, discussions with the Downtown Action Advisory Committee was to get how people are using the space, if at all, what modes of transportation, so are they driving through it, are they walking, are they cycling, and to get some of their early ideas. What are your ideas? What would make the space more inviting, more safe, more functional? We took those ideas along with the feedback of other stakeholders and that helped create two concepts. And those two concepts are what were taken to uh, the public on site. So in the laneway, in Vogelsang Green, on the street, and in the second Engage Kitchener survey. And so we put those two concepts and we looked for what the feedback was specifically about each of the streetscape features and to help prioritize that. So for example, one of the concepts had a water feature at Vogel Sang Green, which sounds great, could be good. What we heard from the public wasn't a high priority. What we heard from operational and, and our staff, very expensive to operate and maintain and the replacement costs, it would have been another hundreds of thousands of dollars just for that. And so in the end, that, all that feedback was incorporated into the final design does not include a water feature, has a, has a hookup for water, but does not have that. And so that's how the, the surveys really helped out and played out. So they saw the concept plans, and that feedback on the concept plans helped build this plan that's before you today. So that feedback from, on the second survey was sort of the wish list of all those uh, passers-bys that you can't contact it, that they thought would be most appropriate. They provided general, anyone provided general feedback as to the concepts and the plans, but they help prioritize the features, yes. Okay. The Vogel's Lane uh, Green uh, area, uh, it's been there for over 40 years. Um, I've enjoyed it for all those 40 years. It's a nice little secluded area right in the heart of the city where you can just go and bury yourself in between all those bushes and have some peace and quiet and not to worry about traffic. Uh, in fact, I was just there two, two weeks ago and last week, and now you've got tables on, uh, installed uh, this past week to pretty it up or to allow for the sitting areas. Um, I really like it the way it was because it was so unique. There's no other spot like that in, in Kitchener. But now you want to change it and do as what you've pointed out. You've also identified that Queen Street is an emergency main through area that's got to be maintained. Yet I look on your submission here, your package on page 31, you've got a design there that covers right all into the middle of Queen Street and Occupy. Could you comment on what's proposed there or what your thoughts are on that? Because I'm not sure. Uh, through the chair, maybe we can uh, cover item number two first. So item number two, as pointed out, there was an idea in one of the concepts, the first concept that was uh, taken to the public, whereby you'd have some space at the bottom of an actual amphitheater of Vogel Saint Green that would essentially extend out into the street. And it was designed with, with a button style because that's uh, in homage to Vol Mr. Vogel saying as to what that park is named after and recognizing some of the industrial heritage of the city. It actually would be uh, a feature that basically the pavement would all carry forward from the park across the sidewalk into the street and essentially, that's in a scenario where you may be closing off the street as well. That's not a scenario that we are recommending in the end. So on the other piece about Vogel Sangreen, I'll let uh, Carol or Corey jump in on that one. Uh, through the chair, if you could have a look at the images on uh, 143 and 144. Um, as far as the existing conditions for the park, uh, there's a lot of issues with uh, uh, safety and there's been a lot of feedback from the public on how they don't feel safe there. Um, one of the issues is that what, what you enjoy as far as the seclusion, it also provides a lot of opportunity for what they commonly call underground economic activity. 
and um, there's also a lot of users, inappropriate uses, uh, uses of the space because it is so secluded and, and people can do things there that other people can't see. So a lot of the general public were commenting on how they didn't like to walk through the park, they would walk around it. But there are, are of course, some users that you, that you do see there now, and especially since um, they've been incorporating like the tables and, that, and bringing more people in. So this design approach here actually opens everything up so you can see a clear view from Duke Street right through to Queen Street. So if somebody's driving by in a, in a police car or whatever, they can just casually look over and see everything that's going on. Um, but you still have the, the shaded area with all the big trees and everything else. And you have an opportunity to make a choice of being in the sun where it's shaded and in a little more quiet area, or you can be out in the open. Or sorry, or you can be out in the open. Um, so I think this design will actually clear up a lot of those issues and make it a more open space and more inviting space. And with more programming, you can invite more people to actually be there. And with the way the design is now, is that it's a lot more flexible as far as use is concerned. So you get the best of all worlds with that. Okay, I see my chime's up, so go back in. All right. Uh, for those that want to speak again, uh, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Gallery Seelock. So, what you're asking for uh, from us today is just to endorse this as I'll call it, you, you call it a design manual, but you could refer to it as a master plan, right? Is this any different than the approach that was taken when we dealt with the Iron Horse Trail, for example, where we had the master plan, but we didn't have fully funding for it, full funding for it, but would come back to budget, and we'd be able to say yes or no when we balanced it against other priorities, or if there was other federal funding that came up? Is it, is it a similar concept that you're asking for us to approve today? Through the chair, I would say it is very comparable to that and many other master plans that we've had in the past. Okay, so... Well, there's definitely financial implications to this report. Um, those decisions can be made at a, at a later date. But at this time, if there's private investment or um, the funding that's already currently attached to it, it can proceed forward in pieces. Through the chair, that's correct. OK, thank you. Councillor Fernandez. Thank you. Um, I noticed in uh, the public public engagement that, uh, just speaking a little bit quickly to Vogelson and Green about keeping the trees, that seemed to be a, uh, a thread all the way through. When I look at 44 it, uh, and 43, is, is, is that what I'm seeing? That the existing trees would remain in the plan? Through the chair, uh, that did come up uh, from at least one member of the public. I actually remember speaking to the individual and we have looked at it. There, there's two or three good ones that I was looking to try and make sure that we conserved as well. What I'm told and what I understand is no matter what design we do, no matter what happens in that area, because there has to be some regrading, it's going to be almost impossible to keep any of the existing trees that are there. We've also heard from the federal government on the consultations that they really uh, would like to see that area opened up a little bit more for visibility uh, beside their building. And so the only th um, Carol can, can jump in if needed that uh, she's assured me that we're going to at least get very mature trees put in there. Um, all right. What's been planned for uh, as far as trees are concerned, there's going to be medium stature trees placed in it, which is why you see the large number because the overriding desire is to have a, a shaded area and a grassed area. They want to be able to have that green space there. Um, I did walk through with the urban foresters and uh, there are a number of trees that are uh, in decline. So some of them would have to be removed as well. But uh, Brandon is quite, quite right about the, any intervention whatsoever um, would require removing the trees. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, then this picture is a little bit deceiving, but it's probably conceptual. I mean, people are going to think that we're going to immediately have a large shaded area, but we all know that even if we put 
some mature trees and they're not going to offer this level of, of shading. Um, with regards to empty storefronts on, our King, on King Street between King and City Hall, do we have an understanding of how many there are right now? Uh, through the chair between Queen and City Hall, there are actually only a handful. Um, so there's actually not that many left. Uh, and it's, it's more once you get past City Hall. The, the old Eaton's building, for example, has uh, significant vacancies. But uh, generally speaking, the vacancy has come up fairly uh, well over the last few years. Okay, so I counted about five or six yesterday when I was biking through. So is that what you call a handful? I'm tr well, I'm trying to do my own mental, uh, my own mental math. Uh, and if you're just talking between City Hall and Queen, yeah, you might be right that there's four or five. I'm, okay. I'll take your word for it. How many um, actual storefronts are there on Queen Street between King and Duke right now? Like there are actual stores, like businesses. I mean, I know that there's the uh, hotel on the bank and, and the new um, little grocery store in behind on Gowdy's Lane. I was trying to think of some other... Uh, quite a few significantly on the can challenge directions between Charles and yes. King. There yes. are significant numbers of, of stores and, and new ones that have emerged in the past few years. Okay. The, the reason I'm asking is, I mean, it, it talks in this report um, about, you know, placemaking and, and um, you know, encouraging more stores and storefronts and, and I'm sorry, all of a sudden I've lost the page. When I look at page 1-6, you've given a list of six reasons not, or the reality of not doing some of this. Space is limited, emergency routes, snow, maintenance, accessibility, and the feds. So you get, actually, you know, this, is, this is going against your recommendation for some, to some degree. Help me understand how you have navigated all of these nots to put this forward. Through the chair, what's on that page are not the reasons to not do anything. These were more the reality of what we need to consider when coming up with a realistic plan. So we could just go and create an amazing place. We could come up with a, a plan to have all of these things happen but we have the experience, we understand, we know that it snows. And so the width of the snowplow helped dictate what you can actually do within the right of way as to how wide that has to be and then therefore how wide the sidewalk is. And so these were just uh, identifying the reality of what went into staff and the consultants thinking of the plan. And that's why there may be a few things that the public said, close it off and just have it as an amazing uh, pedestrian only street. The reality is emergency needs it. Right. And I don't want to interrupt you, I want to get one last quick question in. We have, this, this area seems to be very um, favored by a number of our disenfranchised residents and, and some of our, our street people. Um, I, I see us doing a gentrification of this, and my concern would be, and, and I know that Councillor Evington has, has mentioned this before, as we gentrify our downtown, where are we going to place, uh, where are we going to find the safe places and the, and the appropriate places for our disenfranchised, our people, our, our, um, our residents who are at risk to be safe and to hang out. And, I mean, I realize it's not, you know, we, we have to try and balance their safety with the safety of other residents and other businesses, but we can't just sort of say, well, we're going to just gentrify this area and you guys have to find another Kate, place. you've asked the question, let's... That is my question. No, I know. I'm asking them to answer it. Uh, through the chair, I think what gives me comfort that we, uh, while we may beautify the area, um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest what we're doing with Gentrify because the working center owns the real estate to which they offer the services that they offer, which, um, and, and they will continue to do so. I think this is really an opportunity for us to create a space for everybody, and hopefully that would be the end uh, goal is that uh, regardless of how uh, disenfranchised or not you are, you feel comfortable in this space. Mayor Benedict. 
Thank you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and, and now that you came to me, I'm going to have forgotten. Oh, I remember what it was. Um, because I was originally going to um, interrupt with a point of clarification earlier on. Um, but staff's references that, you know, really we were looking at projects over the next m number of years. Um, I think Councillor Marsh touched on the fact that this was uh, in a previous uh, downtown strategic plan. But more importantly, uh, both uh, Vogel Saying Green and uh, Cenotaph Green were in the capital budget several years ago. And we deferred it, actually, uh, because of the LRT project. And we wanted to wait until that LRT project was done. And that hasn't seemed to get mentioned. So I, I think people need to keep that in context that this is, a, a chunk of this is actually a deferral from several years ago that was done so that we don't build something, have it dug up again during LRT construction, and then redo it. And I'm wondering if staff can confirm that my recollection is correct. Uh, through the chair, I can confirm that and also add the point that we we also see value in bringing the Vogelsang work and Queen Street at the same time as opposed to two separate uh, projects that hopefully there's an economy of scale that we, we benefit from by doing them simultaneously. So it was a previous deferral? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do you staff remember to what amount was the... Uh, through the chair, at the time, um, the budget... Well, I think it was uh, $195,000. Uh, we did a, uh, we, we visited the budget um, this year because we knew that finally the curb had been set for the LRT mm -hmm. and so we upped it to 250000 250, thank you. Councillor Ellington, did you ring back in for comments or questions? Comments. And Councillor Gazzola, for you as questions or comments? With cool. this plan, does the parking lot behind the old city hall disappear in order to expand the, the Vogelsank Park? Through the chair, with this plan, the parking lot uh, that is there that you can access off of Gowdy's Lane would not disappear. But one day, it could be envisioned that that would be a nice infill parcel and that would actually frame this space much better. But right now it's not part of the plan to remove that parking lot. What, what does that picture not show? Where is, a, where is the parking lot there? If you actually look at page 1-43 that we were looking at before, it gives that uh, kind of layout between Gotti's Lane and the uh, laneway between Balsang and uh, Green. Oh, I, I don't quite see, but that's fine. Um, a, a, on page 112, you state that the, this is a Class C estimate, which includes the 30% uh, contingency. Is that already in there, or? Through the chair, yes, that's included. So, so how, I, I, I forget the, your categories of estimates. How, how good is a Class C? Through the chair, what we've indicated is actually a, a class C plus, so it's a 30%. We've included a 30% contingency within this. Some of the information, some of the, the elements, we have a little bit more detailed information, like the street lights. So we're currently sourcing some, so we have a more accurate estimate of what it actually uh, would cost for the street light, whereas some of the other items uh, is not as accurate. So C plus estimate, 30% contingency. Well, what is the best kind of estimates that you give? Is it an A? Through the chair, the next level would be when uh, engineering does the detailed design for the construction in 2018, and that'll get you to a class B. And then as you build it and you get all the invoices, then you have the accuracy. So that's exactly where we're at. So we're, this is a master plan, so we've got it a little bit deeper than a typical master plan. And then the next step would be the Class B estimate. You would know more information through the detailed design next year. And then construction in 2019, and you would know the costs after that. Thank you. Councilor Jeske, you had rung back in for questions? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. What's uh, Duratherm stripping? 
through the chair, it's a decorative way of uh, dressing up pavement. It's essentially something that you can imprint upon uh, within the pavement to do crosswalk design or you can do it for an entire intersection. There's other brands that are out there, but that's one of them. So it's, it's like it's painted on? Or is um, it something you apply to the surface? It, 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 from my understanding, it's something that actually is applied to the surface. Okay. I just thought it's more, it more de decorative than anything else. Uh, through the chair, yes, and it lasts longer and better than painting. Painting can rub off and wear off pretty easy. And so this has a, a longer lifespan. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's for decoration purposes. It's not like a rumble strip to stop traffic or anything like that. Through the chair, that's correct. It's more for decorative design purposes. You see them in, in many uh, neat areas throughout the cities uh, in the world. Okay. Uh, back there, you had a presentation from the uh, uh, owners of the American Hotel and their renovation of their uh, ownership of their block. Which, which looks wonderful. Yet we have uh, oh, probably another half a dozen type buildings from Duke to Charles, also along Queen. Uh, do you have any other applications or any interest from other property owners? I mean, I don't think we the Walper Hotel, but maybe somebody else that uh, is also looking into doing some type of renovation to, to complement this placemaking uh, package? Uh, through the chair, I would, uh, there are uh, a number of active developers who already have acquired buildings along uh, this stretch. And, uh, w and what I might suggest, uh, you know, while, while there's been a significant excitement about the downtown, much of that is centered around the Innovation District, King and Victoria. Um, the interest going towards Queen and further uh, isn't as strong as it's been in the West End. But from what we've heard from, uh, from those building owners and others is that uh, this type of a streetscape enhancement uh, can be the motivation to continue that uh, uh, wave of investment continuing uh, easterly towards the, uh, the rest of the downtown. And the, just through the chair to supplement, the other thing about that too is um, the city could really send a strong signal to those that are looking at doing future private investment in the area by moving forward with this plan and by doing some of the streetscape work. And the other thing is it could help out uh, the delegation that, that presented earlier about the American Hotel. They were showing, punching in a bunch of different uh, retail shops and other spaces along the bottom. Moving forward with this type of plan could help with leasing out those spaces and making it more successful. If the city doesn't do any work and kind of leaves the sidewalks the way they are and leaves the situation the way it is, it may actually make it more of a challenge for them to actually lease out some of that space. Mm -hmm. As we do have some older buildings that they could use a little bit of spicing up, like American Hotel objective, that could be the instigator basically, right? Um, I, I love the lighting that is shown in your, in your photographs here, and then we're going to have some of the vocals saying green, and you got some along. Uh, Queen Street, would they only be along parallel along the sidewalk area in the building or would they be crossing from one side to the other or does that become an emergency issue in terms of height and access and all that? Uh, exactly, through the chair. We, uh, the one early concept actually had different lighting and different styles that were across the street, maybe even instead of street lights, but that came to be uh, a bit of an issue both for, uh, for fire trucks or other larger vehicles that would be going through that area. So we've arrived at uh, stringing the lights between the different uh, decorative light posts parallel to the street, but then on the laneway we could string them over top and even in Volvo Saint Green as well. All right. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. So those were all the questions in the second round by most members of the committee. I'll quickly ask mine. Um, now, a few points have been raised as potential funding sources or partners. Uh, some aspects of the plan, uh, I'll point to the corner of Queen Street and Charles Street, the, uh, the park cat that's uh, potentially proposed there. Like anything that doesn't have a, you know, signified name or identification as a location, uh, have you considered any sponsorships for those little parkettes? 
through the chair, we haven't considered any sponsorships yet, to my knowledge. And that may be part of the determination as we look at the funding sources? Uh, and through the chair, certainly, uh, you know, if, if the BIA were to uh, want to make a significant investment, we've suggested that we would certainly uh, happily share the praise uh, with, with them, and uh, whether that's Vogel Sangreen or the whole street. Okay. And um, if you look at the, uh, the Gaudi's Lane, and I'm again looking at map 1-39, uh, and then between uh, the uh, Vogel Sangreen and then there's a laneway where the parking is, a city par uh, parking. The, the proposed green area in front of the parking. Is that city land or is that part of the federal land? To the chair, uh, the, I believe you're talking about the land that's across from Gowdy's Lane and it's between the other stretch of Gowdy's and Vogelsang? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a little city uh, park at, city owned park at that's right there. Uh, that was originally done in the 80s as well. Okay, all right. Um, so the number of businesses that are along the stretch, obviously the BIA will have some uh, vantage point of seeing a, a better concept uh, design as opposed to just the basic bare minimum. Uh, if uh, committee and council were to go with that direction, um, we don't have a formal commitment from them yet as to what they can come to the table with. Uh, can we make our funding contingent on what they are able to do or uh, uh, advising them that uh, obviously, even though this is being referred to uh, budget, um, again, it, it, you know, depending on if the funding monies are there or not, it's, it's unlikely, um, unless they are able to come to the table with more significant dollars. Is this something that staff are willing to articulate to the BIA? Uh, through the chair, certainly if that's the, the sentiment that comes out through your comments, I will happily uh, uh, carry that message to the board, as will the, the three members of council that sit on the board. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised that, you know, I would prefer, uh, I'm sure other uh, committee members will articulate this too. Uh, again, the BIA is a partner there. Uh, they have access to funding outside of ourselves, and this, this needs to be a collaborative approach. Um, so I'll, I'll reserve some of my comments for later. So I'll go to now just comments. Councillor Davey. Thank you, Chair Singh. I just uh, I actually want to start by thanking staff for their work on this site. Uh, I do think it's a, they did some great work here in terms of identifying what, uh, what the, uh, the stakeholders would like and trying to bring it together. Um, so I absolutely appreciate it. Um, I do want to, actually, actually I also want to mention the, uh, my particular uh, appreciation of making sure you're looking at the maintenance costs because sometimes those can be the big ones. Okay. Um, having said that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to support this, but I want to be 100% clear that I'm supporting it as a master plan or wish list even if you want to use that sort of terminology because um, t to be honest, we, when it comes to placemaking and this does feel in a lot of ways being dropped in our laps sort of uh, a little bit out of the blue. And the fact that staff has already come up with, uh, I guess, $383,000 uh, without having, and, and staying within budgets and over, over and above, I, I, just causes me some concern when I go back to, uh, to residents in terms of equality for placemaking outside of the core. So I want to be clear that I'm, I'm going to support this, but uh, come budget time, I think who knows where we're going to be come budget time in terms of the challenges that we're facing. Uh, I do know that our, the inflation rate to date is, is, is fairly low and it's trending lower. I think we're going to have some challenges come budget time. Uh, so I would, I'm looking to staff to go out and find those dollars, whether it's from the, I'm not going to formalize it in terms of an amendment at this point. Maybe we'll come up with something at, at council or someone else might in the interim. But I want to see a couple of things just in terms of feedback. Number one, um, I, would, I, th I really think that we somehow need to come up with some sort of SWAT team that identifies the locations, the businesses along this route that would benefit from this. We need to do some, some cold calling and saying, if you don't contribute to this, it may not happen. Uh, because at this point, without knowing what our budgets are going to be like, it, some of this may not happen. Um, so you might want to look at the elements along the street and see if we can tie it to those local businesses that they may want to put some money forward towards. Uh, aside from that, I think I also want to see, I'd like to see staff prioritize the four items here come budget time as well. Uh, because if it, 
comes to you know the, the sake of a hundred thousand dollars or something like that i'd like staff's opinion on uh whether the vogel sign green which I'm, i think is one of the most important ones is more important than say the people first plaza uh so we can make that that tough decision uh, but I just want to be 100% clear on that. My only fear in approving this is that the message the community is going to be is going to happen for sure, and I don't want that to be the message, but I do approve of the process. Councilor Ioannidis. Thank you, Chair Singh. Um, yeah, Councilor Davey pretty well said a lot of what I kind of want to say as well. Um, I think this is a really good plan. I think that part of the city definitely could use some form of place making and beautification and everything else. But I'm really struggling with the fact and I'm co it's, uh, that we already came up with an extra just a 500k on top of from other staff resort, other staff departments, other city departments on top of this of, an, of a concern. Um, where the rest of this fund funding is going to come that's underfunded because personally i i can't support it any more than what is even here including including the additional funding that the staff had found uh above that i i mean if i don't see partners that get involved or or other community uh, partners I, I don't think i'll be able to support anything besides what's in that that base budget to be honest and uh, and my biggest concern is not only this project that that's happening but we also had Carl Zair Square that's been dropped in our lap and to me that is a far, a far more higher priority project I rather see more funding go towards that than this one right now and I think that would have a bigger bigger impact on the community so until I see where where the funding is going to come for that I, I'm I'm really really going to be struggling with this one Thank you. Councillor Atherton. Through you, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I've said this many times, the downtown to me is the heart of the entire city, including all of our wards, including Councillor Fernandez's ward, King and Queen, that intersection in that heart represents the essential part of what keeps that heart healthy and beating. It's like the, excuse me being poetic, but the aortic valve of the city. I would really appeal to councillors not to enter staff, not to nickel and dime this project to death. Looking at the benefits and pluses that I see, I would be prepared to double that 1.8 million budget, especially in light of the, uh, what we saw after we pumped millions into the west end of the city, we're now seeing the booming results of that investment. And that was a very brave, some would say gamble or investment. There were the same nervous Nelly comments made at that time about that investment. And by the way, I would quickly add that some of those comments were mine, made in critical news columns. Now I'm on, been on the other side of the fence, I can see the wisdom of that courageous move throughout the innovation district. I'd ask council to show the same vision and imagination and courage that uh, past council showed in the West End. And because part of this fantastic proposal between Charles and King is in my ward, and because I love the downtown, I would urge council to uh, push ahead with this. And I'll certainly be supporting the recommendation. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. It's certainly been an interesting uh, set of questions and dialogue that's gone on uh, around this issue. And I want to begin by thanking staff for uh, all of their work and the community for their, their input into it. I think we all need to recognize that this really is a project that has been a long time in, in coming. 
Um, the reality is we did King Street a number of years ago as part of the original EDIF. Um, there was a recognition at the time there was only so much money that could go actually into streetscape improvements, so we did King from uh, Frederick through to Francis. With the recognition that over time, in the fullness of time, as redevelopment happened, as dollars became available uh, and opportunities presented themselves, we would need to do the side streets, we would need to do King Street from Frederick through to Madison to be consistent with the rest of the downtown. And this is the first phase of us having to, uh, to deal with that. I, I think we also have a history of doing things when they make sense, and hence why we delayed things like Vogel Sand Green before and Cenotaph Green and so on, because now it makes sense that that construction is, uh, is done. And I think it has been pointed out that this is the historical center of, their, of our region where north meets south and east meets west or vice versa depending on how you want to look at it. But the reality is it's, it is the heart of our city and the downtown is the heart of our city that belongs to each and every citizen in the city of Kitchener. And when people from the outside come to the city of Kitchener, as much as we all like to think, they drive to the corner of Franklin and Weber, or they drive to the corner of Fisher, Hallman and Queen, the reality is they don't. That's not the first place they look. It's not the first place that they go. They come into the core. And that's why those investments were made, because they were made to create jobs in the downtown, and they were made to create investment, both of which has happened. As a council, we have a history of making good decisions. We make decisions where things have come in over budget throughout the city and we've made the right investment. When it came time to finding additional dollars for the splash pad with the Dune Pioneer Park Community Center, we found those dollars. When it came time to find dollars for the splash pad at Kiwanis Park, we found those dollars. When the um, uh, skate park came in at 50% over budget at Queen and, and, and Fisher Hallman. We found those dollars because it was the right thing to do. And so I urge council, I urge council to look at this in the same way and remember those strategic investments. Remember the importance of this to, to the city as we go forward. Because we had the courage then, and when this ultimately comes forward, I hope that we have the courage again. I'm the first one to support that we need to find partners. The BIA, I expect, needs to step up. I think some of the other developers in the area need to step up. But all of us have been to conferences. I think everybody around this horseshoe actually has been to conferences. In places like New York, LA, Vancouver, Portland, Chicago, the list goes on, and I've heard people come back and say, wow, I wish we could do this in our city. Wow, I wish we could do that in our city. Well, you know what? Here's a proposal that's suggesting that we do exactly that. So we can't on one side say, yeah, you know what? We want economic development. We want place making. We want those things that we've talked about. But then when the time comes, say, you know, I'm getting a little queasy about it. I think there's a great opportunity here to partner with the federal government. I think there's an opportunity here for public-private investment and, uh, and capitalizing on it. Um, and at the end of the day, I think we're going to create something that's going to take us for the next 50 years and beyond in our community and continue on developing what is the heart of this city and, quite frankly, in the future may be the heart of a broader region. Um, and so I would uh, certainly uh, ask and urge Council to think of it in this context as we deal with it, not only today as we approve this in principle and defer it to budget, but when this comes back in the future. Councilor Gazzola. Boy, I, I listened to all the provincial cabinet ministers last week. The Mayor, are you ready to take a seat there. Uh, I have a bad, I have a bad uh, track record on master plans and uh, unfortunately I'm going to keep my track record consistent on this. I, I won't be supporting this at this point. But uh, having said that, I, I do appreciate what staff have done. They've done an excellent job. In, in bringing forward a, a proposal. I, I think it's, it's a great 
a great plan. I personally would love to uh, see the whole street closed off and no vehicles. Uh, so there, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I don't doubt that this is going to pass through council. That's going to be totally, quite totally supported. But uh, I, have a, I have a number of concerns that uh, I, I think in the fullness of time, this is a great plan. And the thing is, there are a lot of place-making opportunities in our community. Unfortunately, we're seeing too many of them in the downtown. On the weekend, I was in, in the ward that I represent at, at, at a heritage property on Shirk Crescent, where we have almost, uh, two, almost two blocks of, 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 of sort of a heritage area that's been, that's been well, f it was fixed up. There's been a lot of private money put into that area. And yet, I have trouble getting the grass cut on, public, on our public property there. And we can't, we can't afford to cut the grass. And yet, we, we're, we're off to uh, projects like this. This project, when, when I fully understand the figures now, we're a million dollars short as it stands today without, without uh, really moving along. Like we're 530, and, and you know, staff have made some decisions already. I, I re and then and another 460,000 to come. We're, we're $995,000 short as, as we sit today. You know, what happens when we, we get a little more refined? So I, I think uh, it is, it is an, an excellent plan, a good plan. But uh, as I mentioned in my questions, we, we have so many infrastructure problems that we need to look after. And I, we, I keep hearing about federal, provincial money. I keep hearing about it, but I never seem to see it. And it gets gone, it gets gone before it, it gets to any of our projects. So uh, I, I think this is a, this is a, a good project, it has a lot of capability. I'm pleased to see uh, uh, some, uh, a new investor coming into our community that I heard nothing about that, uh, but uh, really will we'll, we'll add to this. And, and, and it, they've indicated they're uh, prepared to go ahead. They're prepared to go ahead in the hopes that uh, someday uh, the, the city will, will, will move along. And, and I asked actually that group if they're, they're looking for any money from the city. They said, no, but they are getting some credits out of our DC funds and, and, and other credits. So. And good for them, okay? I think they're going to do a wonderful job. I just, we, we, need to, we need to put the brakes on a little bit here. When this uh, comes back eventually, we're, we all, we, we look at putting all these jobs together and doing them all at once. I would like to see a little more detail on what kind of savings there are on, on doing that and not just say that's the way it is. I like, you know, can we have some real discussion on that? So, at this point, uh, I won't. I won't be supporting where it's at now. Yep. Go ahead. Point of clarification, and it's probably to I would guess um, Cynthia. Um, are we having any problems affording cutting grass across the city, um, or is it just that we are following a policy that's outlined by by us? Council Council we see like that's not germane to the. It made, I'm sorry. Was made, but there is media and people watching, and Councillor Gazola made a comment about not being able to afford to cut the grass, and that does not need to be part of this article. And so I think we need to dispel well, what he said about cutting the grass that we can't afford it and that's why I'm again we all face challenges in meeting absolutely with, with maintenance in our ward so again I like to keep it the conversation in order to the, the recommendation the staff report so I think that's not necessary right now but if you can want to challenge me you can go ahead I, I do because he he brought it up and he's saying we're able to find money for this project but that we can't afford to cut the grass in part of our public right away he said that I don't so I'm just asking for a simple answer from staff. Are we just follow, following the policy that we set out and the guidelines that we set? It's a yes or no answer. 
But can can we afford to cut the grass in the city? Uh, 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 <laughs> Councilor Rizola didn't say we can't afford to cut the grass. He was making a specific example in his ward to one specific area. Okay, well, maybe I'm the so. only one who heard him say that we can't afford to cut the grass. Maybe I'm the only one, but I guess I'll have to play it back and, and, and see. Ms. Fletcher, are, are you able to comment on the part, the park that Councilor Gazola referenced on? Not about our overall grass maintenance policy across the city, particularly to the point that Councilor Gazola was referring to. And if you can't, let's move on with this item. If you're asking about a specific area, I cannot comment today. I don't have the details in front of me. Is there a specific part in the award that you were referencing to, re referencing to Councillor Gazzola? That's what he said. Uh, I, I made a comment. Uh, okay. All right. I, I I'm sorry. I just want staff to clarify. Can we afford cutting the grass across the city? Yes, we can afford. Thank you. Let's, thank I'm you. not pleased if we cannot go do a back and forth. Um, please and thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Fernandez. So in the past, um, I often support master plans, and even when there has been no funding attached to it. Um, and, and as I reviewed this, this plan with all of its um, interesting diagrams and, and re, you know, um, referrals to other areas within North America, within Canada, it, it looks really exciting and it looks really innovative. And I, I love the idea of, of of having places, as I said, I've, I've sat at Gowdy's Lane and, and there was musicians there and it felt really, really positive and really um, encouraging to be there. Um, but there's a but. And, you know, staff has put funding to this plan, which is unique. Uh, in some of our master plans, we don't often see all of the funding. Uh, but I see some drawbacks to approving this full plan at this time. There are still a number of locations on King Street that I feel that we need to address first before we proceed fully with the strategy. I'm not saying that we shouldn't proceed with some of it. I'm saying we need to take a really good look before we fully proceed with everything. We have the money for Fogles and Green redevelopment. We have the money for the Queen Street work that's going to be done, the re reconstruction. But we don't have the money yet for some of the placemaking. Additionally, we heard from, um, I believe it was the consultant or the architect for American Block. I really want to see how that plays out. And although, uh, Mr. Sloan, you, you mentioned that we need to have you know, some urban design first, we need to understand where sidewalks are going and where certain um, aspects of urban design are going to go so we can work hand in hand with redevelopment. I think we're going one step further with this plan and, and saying we're going, to, we're going to do this as well. We're going to add placemaking. We're going to add um, some additional features that maybe we wouldn't be doing until we knew exactly what was happening with that redevelopment. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would like to fully support the redevelopment of Volgas and Green under the present budget. Um, I would like to take uh, the, the paragraphs and break them out into three separate votes, all of them recorded votes. Um, I, I think that we have to, we see an opportunity for a partnership with what's going to be happening at the American Block, and I think we should be encouraging more of that. Um, and seeing where those businesses will benefit from the work that we're going to be doing. Um, I, but still some of those partnerships are a little bit ambiguous and until we have some certainty around that funding, I can't support the full recommendation at this time. Uh, I, just, I, I mean, I, I look at the ideas here and, and I, I love them. It's hard not to. It's hard not to th think about little private places and laneways with musicians and, and string lights. How, is, how can we not like that? How can we not support that? It's just that I don't think we have the budget for it at this time, and I don't want to commit this close to budget time to fully implementing this until we have a little bit better of an understanding of where we stand in our fuller budget in the whole, the whole package. 
So I'm going to ask for um, those three paragraphs to be broken out individually and Point of order. That's been called by Councillor Davy. So yeah, just like I don't have a well, I, mean, I do have a problem with it. Uh, I'm just curious how if we break out break them out all three of them, supposing we approve the first clause and we don't approve the second clause, then what happens? What is the unfunded portion referred to if it doesn't go to the budget? So I guess I guess I would suggest for in the least that we take clauses one and two together, and then clause three can be separate. Okay, that that probably makes a little bit more sense okay, thank because you. they are they are definitely in, the intricately uh, I would meshed agree. together. So that that's fine. I'm okay with that. Carry on with your comments. Um, I think that was it. Okay, Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Singh, and through you, uh, I think Councillor Galloway Seelock said it uh, correctly. We're not approving anything here today. We're simply endorsing this Queen Street placemaking plan, and we have the final say on it come budget time. We can do nothing. We can do the base model. We have time to go out and search for partnerships and funding to enhance this plan. So all we're simply doing today is endorsing the plan. We're not passing anything. We're not committing any funds whatsoever by supporting this recommendation today. Uh, I am so thrilled to have seen this presentation by own developments because this is what we want. This is a development that's going to preserve heritage in our downtown area and enhance this building and enhance the streetscape and the economic vitality of our downtown. There's going to be opportunity for uh, retail and, and small businesses and services, local, unique, independent businesses in this building. This is what we hope to attract. And they're coming here before this is even on the table. So it's not, let's build it and they'll come. They're, they're saying, they're, they're planting a flag here saying, we believe in what you're doing. And we have a chance to enhance what they're doing. And I think that's going to have a trickle down effect. Um, uh, I, I do agree with Councillor Davy and Ioannidis with, with the financial aspects. Uh, I want to see partnerships in this too. And this, by, by supporting uh, this recommendation and endorsing this plan, gives our staff time to search out uh, more funding and more partnerships. Uh, our downtown is not just King Street. It goes beyond King Street. Uh, and I, I love what staff is doing here. That by, by, It does make sense to gain efficiencies by combining these elements together and doing it at the same time. It's like you're, if you're renovating your bathroom, you don't say, I'm going to replace the bathtub now, and then, oh, later on, oh, I've got to do the, the, uh, the flooring. You do it all at once, and it makes sense, and it gets done all at once, and there's less disruption. Uh, our downtown, uh, we have great events here. We attract a lot of people to the downtown. It is the heart of the city and we want when you come downtown to have great things to see and do and have a sense of civic pride. So uh, I, I want to thank that because this plan too is, is the foundation was in engagement. It wasn't them saying this is what we think you should you should want but this is what we think we need. This was going out and finding out what our citizens want and they put it all together. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort. This is an awesome plan and uh, I am proud to support the recommendation and endorse the placemaking plan and look forward to budget time to seeing what we can come up with with partnerships. If we can't sell this awesome idea then you know we'll make decisions at that point but all I have to say. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Okay, because I know it's been mentioned a few times um, that this is at budget time, but and the funding, we don't make any decisions about the funding. But here, when I'm reading the clause, it says that any unfunded operating or capital cost. So to me, we actually are approving the... the, the but we're approving just... Well, that's because it's already in... What's in that? a capital forecast? Yeah, we're the basic repairs, the infrastructure that, repairs. Plus the additional funds that staff have created for this. What's that? It's already in the budget. So we are no, no. Actually, Councillor Ioannidis is saying above the million mark, the five hundred thousand, yes. five thirty-five. Staff have found that's where technically we would be approving that, yeah, but we, staff can we didn't kind of. That's that's a lot. Staff to clarify. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Brandon. 
through the chair to clarify, those are already in the budget, as Councillor uh, Galloway Sealock was mentioning. So the engineering already has money in 2019 for the road. There's money for Vogelsang. There's already money in the approved capital budget and forecast for urban design improvements and economic development and transportation. And so those are already in approved budgets that we have right now. It's just we were looking for the exact specific thing to, like, from a planning division standpoint, we were going to be investing in urban design improvements on Charles Street, and we were looking for that actual thing to do at that time. And so that's, that's in there. Okay. I want to be clear. So the economic development portion of the funds, we already approved for this as a, spe as a spenditure. Because uh, I recall us, say, us coming here and saying we would have to approve every single dollar that's in that economic development fund. Uh, through the chair, uh, no, that's not correct. And, uh, so, to be clear, the funding that uh, we fund, we've uh, suggested would work here comes through capital that it goes into downtown improvements. It would be delaying other works that we may have been doing in the next few years. So it's in the forecast it hasn't been it, uh, it wouldn't been have been a line item decision by council for example so it's funding that we know we have an ability to shift around in the future years but it has not been approved by this council okay thank you and that was a clarification that council Ines was asking beyond the standard base capital cost estimate of a million uh, the report as it outlines has identified I think uh, another million which is but of that 535,000 funding that could be applied to implementation of the uh, placemaking plan. Staff have found funding sources for that. It's remaining 460000 that's unfunded that would have to be referred to budget. Correct? And as we approve this, in technicality, this committee would be approving that 535 that's beyond the, what's already in the capital for the, uh, the, the standard base capital cost. Uh, we would be giving authority for that. And that's where the clarification was asked of. Through the chair, I would suggest that pending the decision on what to do with what's currently identified as the unfunded amount, whether that's through Hardman review or at council, that would then have a cascading effect of having to determine what to do with the amount that staff's identified that could be allocated from the capital budget towards this. And so we wouldn't just we wouldn't just go ahead and spend the five hundred and thirty five thousand on like a sixty percent of features of the plan. We would have to go through and reevaluate exactly. the whole process. And that's what I think Councilor Ionetis was looking for a clarification on. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Thank you. Well, point of information, go ahead. Well and just to be clear, look, look, I hope everybody remembers. Everything in the capital budget is actually not approved until we approve the new capital budget next year. I mean, things get moved around all the time, from one year to the next, amounts get changed, staff deal with it, and then finally the final numbers come to us. So that's when we're really going to deal with it. So, you know, numbers-wise, the only thing that really matters today is, is that it's going to be referred to the capital budget. Why wasn't it outlined that way? If it was outlined that way, then... <laughs> that's we practice. We all know that. If it, w it would have been better cleared. Uh, Councilor Arnettis, I think you got your answer. I, thi I think through the conversation clarification, this is being referred to budget again. And uh, Mayor Vanovic, you are right. Ultimately, at the end of the day, regardless if it's in capital or not, we have a say as to what our priorities may be at that point. So I think that's, that's been clarified well enough. Councilor Marsh? Thank you, Chair Singh. Uh, I want to commend staff on this People First plan. This is a comprehensive plan, and specifically I want to uh, commend staff on seeking out and, uh, and having the right conversations with the, all the uh, affected departments to, to, ha to gain support and input. From, the, from departments that aren't typically uh, consulted uh, ahead of time. So when we have uh, engineering and uh, operations and, uh, excited about placemaking, we are moving in the right direction. And I would hate for staff's initiative for, uh, to do that type of planning and that type of diligent planning uh, to, to be uh, uh, scolded. You know, uh, also, 
the consultant came up with uh, wonderful dream uh, ideas that would be beautiful to implement if this was our only project. But uh, staff have already done a lot of the shaving off of that uh, dream budget to make it more realistic. And so we can't then take this more realistic budget and totally shave it down to just say, yep, just replace the underground infrastructure, put back some pavement, there you go. We need to uh, make sure that we realize this is not some amazingly uh, uh, out of the water, innovative um, idea that is unreachable, unattainable. This is using the ideas that the community has told us they would like us to implement within our city, not just in the downtown, but throughout the city, to, to, uh, to make sure that we have a livable city for people, a people first plan. And uh, I, I love the plan, I'm not trying to put it down, but it's, it's, it's not like a, so, uh, something totally unattainable. We, we have the, uh, the ability to do this. We, I think, uh, and, you know, uh, can, can look for additional ways to, to find that 460000 It's not $945,000 that is, is missing. It, it, it's 845000 but staff have already found that 535000 within existing budgets, as we've reiterated over and over. It's not like they found money out of the 2017 budget. We, they, they have forecasted that in 2019, we will need to spend more money on bike racks, on planters, on lighting and tables and chairs. This is not something that is um, beyond our scope. We can do this, and I'm looking forward to doing this, and I hope to see uh, the support of all of Council for this well-executed plan. Let's, uh, let's, let's then get into the nitty-gritty details of the finances at budget time when it's appropriate. Councilor Jeske. I note that at the beginning of the report it talks that this particular project is involved with all wards, but I would have to disagree. It's only in wards uh, 1 and 10 and not in the other wards. Uh, this report has Nine some. Ten. Sorry? Nine and ten. Nine and ten. Sorry, you're correct. Um, this report uh, is well done by staff. Uh, I do like it. There's a lot of uh, research that's gone into it. A lot of very nice, pretty pictures. Uh, very well done from other municipalities. I've seen them in my travels as well through uh, Europe as well as the states. Um, and along with these pretty pictures, if you want to implement them, is, is dollar signs. Just, just, the way, just the way it works. And uh, I'm not sure in terms of everything that you've shown here, all the dollar signs could add up to even more than what you've sort of projected if you really want to go all out. Um, um, I like it. It's, it's sort of going in the right direction. But, but I'm also very leery of the dollars and cents, especially when we have to deal with infrastructure. And this past week at the AMO, we tried to get the province to increase the HST 1%, and they declined. So that means increase in property taxes. And if you increase property taxes, where do you set your priorities? Do you set it with these nice little projects, or do you go with infrastructure that was turned down? And that's been harped on by staff as well, different departments. <laughs> and uh, to, to go forward. And so this all has to be discussed at budget time. And uh, when we have to do it, we have to look at the bottom line and we try to prioritize everything and that's always nice. But then you always look at the bottom lines being what's the course of inflation and, and then all of a sudden you start eliminating. So it is nice, I'd like to support it, but I have my, my doubts that we can afford everything that's uh, gonna be presented to us. Council Gallery C Log. We always challenge staff to look at the big picture. And that's exactly what they have done here. They've come together with a comprehensive plan that has involved many different departments. And I think that that's very key. This is a great document that staff has committed to implement in our planning on looking at other, to find other revenues to fund this plan. 
I've recently been fortunate enough to travel to a few locations within North America, like Boston and West Palm Beach and Charlottetown. And I can tell you, while I'm there as a visitor, I mostly stay in their downtown, and I go to these types of places that they've created within their cities. And that's where you, everyone kind of just comes together. You know, whether you're a tourist or a local, everyone just comes together there. And I think we need to continue to do more of that. But I agree, we need to find alternative forms of revenue to help support that. As we heard through the presentation today, because it keeps coming up that infrastructure, this is infrastructure. This infrastructure is crumbling. That's one of the reasons why we're here. It's one piece of the puzzle, but we've brought many different pieces into this infrastructure problem we have, and we're trying to make it better. Rather than just fixing the concrete that's currently crumbling, we're coming back with fixing the concrete that is currently crumbling to something that is better, that will make our community better, because it will provide placemaking. And when you go to different places around the world or North America, these are the places you gravitate towards. I love the ideas that are in here. Uh, I think we could probably go further, but if there's more private investment, maybe we can go bigger. But right now, let's stay with this plan. Let's move it forward. Let's endorse this document and really figure out what we need to fund it when it comes to budget. I commend staff on a really well document. Councilor Gazzola. I just want to make a quick comment. My comment is that Unfinanced capital accounts do not belong to departments and staff. Only council can redirect monies that have been unspent. And, and uh, this is being done here today without any council approval. So it's up to council. I just want to clarify that. Go ahead, Council Gallagher, see luck. My point of clarification is this is not unallocated but already within their budget. So basically you took from the transportation demand management budget for bike racks and you took from um, engineering department for the road work. And so it's not money that's left unfunded. It's just funding they already have in Please, there. Please, I'm not going to allow back and forth. <sighs> So I, I asked that question, I'm seeing nods, and so it's not unallocated, it's what we've already allocated for these purposes, they're just putting it towards these projects. I'll like let Mr. May all clarify time. also. So. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Councillor Calloway, see that probably said it better than I can. The other example is every year council approves an urban design budget. You don't specifically say what streets that money will be spent on. Uh, staff uh, then uh, work to do that and that's exactly what's happening here. Some of these monies you approved previously through the budget and they're being spent for the purposes for which you approve them. Thank you. And those were uh, comments from the committee. I'll quickly make mine. Um, also, you've heard it already. but. Uh, compliments to the overall report and the well laid out design and to you Mr. Sloan that you did feel some very difficult uh, questions and those are important especially when additional investments are um, um, requested uh, when we again I wouldn't say we were caught off guard but these are additional uh, enhancements that uh, that were necessarily anticipated early on enough but that's not to say that they lack importance um, others have said it already the the fact that this provides a great way of placemaking a vibrancy as well as uh, creating uh, some you know a, a better attraction points uh, especially to to this area that's had such a lacking for so many years uh, so the importance of the nobody can negate regardless of all the priorities that we have to look at in balance uh, where I'm at right now uh, personally speaking outside of the principal design and plan of it where uh, staff uh, deserve compliment uh, there still is a question of priority and I think that will have to be debated during budget and that's how I am giving my support to to the uh, the report right now that I in principle I support it I think it's a good design it's it's great ideas uh, a convergence of great ideas but again how do we fund it where the partnerships come from will be what is a final deciding point for me to see uh, if I support uh, uh, carrying this uh, uh, project through um, ultimately I think um, 
we are coming uh, to the table with significant dollars, even as is right now. There needs to be a buy-in from our business community in the core. That's not because it's just for this one place. Uh, this is great what we're doing for the Queen Street uh, placemaking plan, but there's a placemaking plan that's deserving in all parts of Ward, many areas. So we need to uh, have a basic plan where it revolves around partnerships because we can't necessarily do it all alone. And, and that's where my support will lie when this comes back for budget. But for now, I do support it. Uh, no one's called for a recorded vote. Uh, I did so. Oh, did you? Okay. And it's been moved by Councillor, oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Marsh, right? Yes. Sorry. And yes, it's in two parts, that's right. So I heard that you wanted it broken up, but I, forgot, I didn't realize you had said recorded vote. So when ready. So the, first the first two paragraphs are one, and then the last paragraph is the other vote. 